Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Brothers and sisters, welcome to a brand new episode of The End of Days with me, Muhammad Tim Humble. We're talking about the methodology of a Muslim to be saved at a time of trials and tribulations, to be saved during the minor signs and indeed the major signs that make up the end of days. And we are up to our sixth point. Stay away from trouble and don't even think of going near. This is an essential point for a Muslim to understand and it is taken from a hadith that we already mentioned in the end of days program. The hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that the one who is sleeping is better than the one who is lying awake and the one who is lying awake is better than the one who is sitting and the one who is sitting is better than the one who is standing and the one who is standing is better than the one who is walking, and the one who is walking is better than the one who is running, and the one who is running is better than the one who has fallen into it. SubhanAllah, this hadith is a clear evidence of staying away from problems and trials when they happen. Add to that the hadith of the Euphrates River, when the Euphrates shows its gold, that we don't go there. Add to that the hadith of the Dajjal, that the Muslims will flee into the mountains and keep away from the Dajjal. Don't go to his fitna in case you are afflicted by it. Add to that the ahadith regarding the person who fights his brother and that there will be a fitna in which the Muslims will fight one another. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that the one who has camels, let him go to his camels. And the one who has sheep, let him go to his sheep. And the one who has land, let him go to his land. And one of the people came and said, O Messenger of Allah, if I don't have any of those, I don't have sheep or camels or land. The Prophet ﷺ said, let him go to a stone and strike his sword against it until it becomes blunt. I.e. let him be as far away as possible from the troubles and tribulations. If he can travel outside of the city and escape them, let him escape them. If he can't travel outside of the city to escape them, and the best that the person can do is to simply strike his sword against a rock so he has no participation in these troubles whatsoever, then this is better. But we don't go on a tourism trip to see the minor signs or to see the major signs. The Dajjal has come, let's all go and see if we can see Kafir written on his forehead or not. It's not the methodology of the Muslim. We stay away as much as we can. And if we are presented with a fitna, then we ask Allah to keep us firm and to keep us strong. The seventh principle that I want to talk to you about preventing a trial is better than removing one once it has happened. And this is another key and fundamental principle that we ask people to apply when it comes to trials and tribulations. The minor signs we can do nothing about when Allah decrees them to come, they come. The major signs we can do nothing about when Allah decrees them to come, they come. However, trials and tribulations, many times we have an option to avoid conflict and avoid trials and tribulations, avoid problems before they happen, before things become worse, before things get really bad. So from the methodology of the Muslim that we've learned from these ahadith in Sahih Muslim, that when a trial happens, it is very difficult to remove it. The major signs will happen one after another after another, like skittles that strike one another and fall all of them over. So if this is the case, then the least we can do as Muslims is to try to stop trials and tribulations from becoming worse. We can't change the decree of Allah, that will always be there but at least we can do our best to reduce the trials that happen in our times and reduce the trials that our children will be exposed to by stopping things before they happen rather than by seeking to fix a problem once that problem is underway. And that goes for general principles like education. Educate ourselves before it happens. Don't try and educate people about the Dajjal while he's walking on the earth. Rather, try to educate people about the Dajjal before he comes onto the earth. This is also another key and fundamental principle that a Muslim must apply in their life 
in order to avoid trials and tribulations. Your aim should always be to stop something from happening and to deal with it before it happens rather than reactive. Teach the people about the trials before the trials come. Try to stop the minor trials such as the killing and fighting among the Muslims as much as you can. It's a lot easier to stop something before it happens and the fear is that if it does happen and it gets carried away, then what will happen is it will be soon after that that it will lead to a minor, which will lead to a major, which will lead to so on and so forth, to the end of days and the day of judgment. So it's very important we deal with this as quickly as we possibly can. We try to stop trials from happening. No doubt the decree of Allah is absolute. And when Allah decrees for these major signs to happen, they will happen. But we can certainly make things easier for ourselves in the meantime by reducing the trials and tribulations that come before them as much as Allah has given us the ability to do so. From the major means of surviving trials and tribulations is to avoid your desires when it comes to taking a fatwa and to take a fatwa from the dalil. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that one of the signs of the Day of Judgment will be the prevalence of ignorance and the decreasing of knowledge. In some of the ahadith, it mentions, Hatta ida lam yatruk alima, until when Allah will leave no scholar. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in some of the ahadith, wa in aftaka nasu wa aftauk, even if the people give you fatwa after fatwa. So the issue of fatawa is a dangerous issue. And you and I as Muslims both know that you can find a fatwa for almost anything. If you are in a trial and tribulation, if things are going bad, if minor signs are coming and things that are causing you to fear for your deen, you can find a fatawa to go, to stay, to sit, to stand, to participate, to leave. The key thing is, are you going to be fooled by what I term fatwa shopping, going and looking for the fatwa that is the easiest one for you or the fatwa that is most in accordance with your desires and your nafs. You want to be involved. You want to go. You want to take part. You want to witness that sign, even though you know the Prophet ﷺ forbade you from doing so, but you want to do it. So you find a fatwa. And I term this fatwa shopping. You go shopping for a fatwa that suits you. You go shopping for a fatwa that suits your nafs, your desires and your soul, instead of going and looking for a fatwa that is in accordance with the dalil. The attachment of the Muslim must always be to the evidence, the dalil, the evidence, always the evidence that your attachment and what you do when you see these minor signs, when you see the major signs, when you experience the trials and tribulations that come with the end of days, then you have to ask yourself, what does the Qur'an tell me to do? What does the Prophet ﷺ told me to do? Not what does my nafs want to do? Because your nafs may want to do something that is against the sunnah or against the Qur'an. We've heard about the topic of decreasing emotion, limiting your emotion to the sharia. We talked about sticking to the sunnah, sticking to the major scholars avoiding your desires and avoiding fatawa that suit you is very important. And this is one of, I believe, the minor signs of the Day of Judgment with regard to people taking ignorant fools as their leaders to give them fatawa. But the danger is in this, that people take a fatwa from people, they know that they are not qualified to give it. They know that they are not reliably strong and firm in this area. Maybe they know about something else. Maybe they have a lot of knowledge about Zakah, or they have a lot of knowledge about one particular area, but they take general fatawa from them, especially fatawa about trials and tribulations and major and minor signs of the Day of Judgment. And so what happens is they follow their desires. This is a sign in itself of the coming of the Day of Judgment. How many people you see about any Islamic issue, they say, I follow the opinion of Shaykh, dot, dot, dot. Say to them, Subhanallah, do you really think this evidence of his is strong? Very strong. Why? Because it suits what I believe. It suits my desires. It suits my feelings. It suits what I want. That's why it's strong. That's not an evidence for something being strong. We go with the evidence and the delhi. If the Prophet ﷺ said, don't go, I'm sure when the Euphrates uncovers its gold, 
there will be fatawa that it is permissible for you to go and take it. But if you know the Prophet ﷺ forbade you from doing it, then fear Allah and stick with the dalil, stick with the evidence of what the Prophet ﷺ told you to do and the evidence of what he told you not to do. From this, in addition, we can say the ninth point is that the Muslims are not the same in their knowledge. And this is really backing up what we've said already. There are ordinary people and there are scholars. The regular Muslim needs to find a reliable scholar to attach themselves to and not simply a shahawat, the issue of desires or what they feel or I think this is right. Rather, they should find a noble and righteous scholar to ask and follow the method of that scholar in dealing with these trials and tribulations. This is the safety that the companions were upon. When they were stuck in a matter, when they saw a fitna, they went to the Prophet ﷺ. After his death, they went to Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali radiallahu an. فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِينَ مِنْ بَعْدِي And the sunnah of the Khulafa al-Rashidin al mahdiin after me. So they went to the noble scholars. Ordinary Muslims should try to have reliable scholars in Islam that they ask when it comes to these issues and that they don't follow their own heart or their own course of action. And that's just really emphasizing what we've already said. Take a break now and after the break, inshaAllah ta'ala, we will talk more about the methodology of a Muslim in being saved from trials and tribulations. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 011 IBAN GB49ARAY 3000830113230. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Marriage or divorce? What's Islamic ruling? Solution or problem? Heaven or hell? Uh, that is a misconception. You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half. Every Friday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Say he is Allah one and only. Allah the absolute and eternal. He begets not, nor is he begotten. There is nothing like him. Focus 
on the source of wisdom. The Quran is a magnet and the Sunnah is a revelation. Islam had the solution right from the beginning. We apply that and the problem is solved. Focus on the solution for our world. There is no man on the face of earth. His life was narrated to us like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Poor, rich, white, black, Arab, non-Arab. Everybody say the same word. Obey Allah, obey the messenger. Focus on the akhirah. Tawbah is mandatory upon each and every Muslim. Success for the Muslim is having the correct belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has power of all things. Has power of all things. Focus on the facts and realities that motivate the world towards Islam in Islam in Focus, next on Peace TV. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK. B151TH. Pound account number 0113230. IBAN GB49ARAY 3000830113230. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, welcome back after the break. We're talking about the methodology of a Muslim in being saved from trials and tribulations. And so we come to our next point. Stay away from being uncertain and switching from place to place or side to side. Stay firm upon your religion and firm upon the Quran and the Sunnah. One of the things we see at times of trials and tribulations, brothers and sisters, and we see this pretty much in every trial that I have been alive to witness, and I'm sure in all those that precede it, is that there are people who are mutaraddit. There are people who practice taqallub. They switch around 180, 180, 180 all the time. So they're facing forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards. It is said that this is the meaning of al-qa'im in the hadith that the one who is sitting is better than the one who is standing. Some of the scholars said the one who is standing is mutaraddit, doubtful. Should I go this way or this way? Should I go with this group or this group. And then they go along with one group and then they change and go with the other. And then they change and go with the other. They feel uncertain. Brothers and sisters, if you feel uncertain like this in the trials of our lifetime today, then how will you feel if you are presented with the Dajjal? If you are presented with Jannah, which is Jahannam, and Jahannam, which is Jannah, how will you feel when you are presented with those things? How will you possibly escape? So we have to develop the habit of being firm. We've spoken at length now nine or ten points about saving yourself from trials and tribulations by the help of Allah. Brothers and sisters, you know that most people around you are not going to do that. That is the nature, the sunnah of Allah that Allah has put on this earth that most people around you are not going to do that. They are not going to stay firm. They are going to talk with desire. They're going to go fatwa shopping. They're going to ignore the major scholars. 
they're going to follow their desires, follow their heart, let their emotions take them outside. What is that going to do to you? You have a choice. You can either be like the rock in the storm, like the big island made of rock in the storm. The waves come and beat against it, but the island doesn't move. Or you can be like a little floating piece of plastic on top of the sea. When the waves come, they move it from one side to the other, to the other. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu talked about a fitna, tamuju kamauj al-bahr. It strikes and rises up like the waves of the sea. You can be like the beach house. When the waves of the sea come, they push it down. The tsunami comes and they ruin it. Or you can be an island made of solid rock. When the waves of the sea come, it doesn't matter if it is a tsunami, it doesn't matter if it is the largest of waves, that island stays exactly where it was, solid and without moving. And yes, it may be harmed, it may be affected, parts of it may fall, but it stays solid and it stays firm. And that's how we want to be in the time of fitan. We don't want to be the people who move around. What did the Prophet ﷺ say about the Dajjal? Abdullahi Uthbitu, O servant of Allah, remain steadfast, remain solid. When the Dajjal comes and shows you all of these trials, remain firm. When you see his Jannah, know that it is Jahannam. When you see his Jahannam, know that it is Jannah. Be willing to put your head into the fire in order to taste the cool water. Remain firm upon Islam, and this is a principle in every trial and tribulation. We know certain things from the Sunnah that it is haram for us to do, such as rebellion, for example. And we know that this is not permissible for us to do against the Muslim ruler. And so we see something happens and the people call for it. And the people invite other people to do it. And it becomes emotional and it becomes fatwa shopping and it becomes moving away from the scholars. And everybody wants to do it. All they go in one rush. You're going to be the island in the storm. Solid. Staying where you are, sticking to the Qur'an and the Sunnah, not being affected by emotion, not being affected by minor students of knowledge who don't have understanding of the issue, not being affected by your desires or what your heart wants, but remaining firm upon Islam. The 11th point, don't make the texts as you want them to be, but make what you want in accordance with the texts. This is another major principle on a similar line, and it's extremely important. The methodology of the Yahud, which we are told about in the Quran, is that they would twist the texts of the Torah in order to suit their desires. As for the believer, we are told, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا It's not for a believing man, nor for a believing woman. If Allah and His Messenger decide a matter that they should have any say in it at all, you have no say, no choice, no decision. And whoever disobeys Allah and His Messenger has indeed gone far astray. And this will be the nature of the person in the fitna. If they are making the texts of Islam according to what they want, instead of making what they want in accordance with the texts. So when we see a text or a principle from the principles of Islam or the texts of Islam, what we do is that we make our desires in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah. And we don't bend and twist the Quran and the Sunnah to match our desires as the Yahud did with the Torah. And perhaps even you can say, the Christians did to a certain extent with the Injil. Although not as much as the Yahud, but they did the same with the Injil, that they twisted the texts of Allah to match their desires instead of matching their desires to what Allah Azza wa Jal revealed to them as the believers are commanded to do. And Allah Azza wa Jal said about this, فَلَا وَرَبِّكْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِيمَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا In Surah An-Nisa, Allah Azza wa Jal said, in Ayah number 65, For by your Lord, they do not believe until they make you their judge in that which they dispute over. I.e. make the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
the judge between that which you dispute over, then they do not find in themselves any dislike, any resistance to what you have decided for them. And they submit with complete submission. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu dukhulu fi silmi kaffa. O you who believe, enter into Islam completely. وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ And don't follow the footsteps of the shaytan. إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُبِينٌ He is a clear enemy to you. So subhanallah, as Muslims, we are required to submit to Allah completely. Not to have a half a desire to do something and a half a desire to obey Allah. And then what we do is we twist the Qur'an and the sunnah to match our desire. Rather, our desire has to be in accordance with the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala said, all of the people are of ijma' consensus. Ajma' al-nas. All of the people are of consensus. Ala anna man istabanat lahu sunnatu rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lam yakun lahu an yada'aha li qawli ahadim min al-nas. All of the people are of consensus. Al-Imam al-Shafi'i met Al-Imam Ahmed. He studied from Al-Imam Malik, from the students of Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala. Wa rahimahullahu jami'ah. May Allah have mercy upon all of them. He had links to all of the four Imams and the major scholars of his time. And he said every single one of them is united. Every single scholar is united. Ijma' consensus. That the one who the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam becomes clear to them, it is not permissible for them to leave that sunnah for the statement of anyone no matter who they are. It's not permissible for them to leave that sunnah for anybody else. It's not permissible for them to take the sunnah and replace it with Abu Hanifa or Malik or Shafi or Ahmed or anybody else. Rather, whoever that person is, if the sunnah becomes clear and that the sunnah is in difference to what my shaykh has told me, my imam has told me, my madhab has told me, my teacher has told me, my parents have told me, then it is obligatory for us to follow the sunnah and to leave the opinion of anyone or anything else that goes against it. Of course, this is when the sunnah becomes clear. We said for the ordinary person, when the sunnah is not clear to you, you need to ask somebody, the best person who has the most knowledge that you have access to in that area that you're asking them, you have to ask. And then you have to implement what they say as long as it is not clear that it has contradicted the sunnah. But when the sunnah becomes clear to you, there isn't another opinion. And sticking to the sunnah and sticking to this way is essential in the life of a Muslim in order to avoid these trials and tribulations. Of course, all of these points are quite similar. They fall into the similar sort of bracket, but it's just serving further to emphasize the importance of sticking to the sunnah, the people of knowledge, real knowledge, not fatwa shopping, not going out following desires, not following emotions, and being firm upon the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and making your desires in accordance with the Qur'an and the sunnah, and not making the Qur'an and the sunnah in accordance with your desires. That's all we have time for in this segment. Inshallah ta'ala, we'll be back for what may well be the final episode of the series, inshallah. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.